So hi everybody, I'm a CPython core developer and uh, I propose you to join me this weekend to sprint on CPython. So for the people who don't know, CPython is a C implementation of Python. It's um, half written in C and half in Python. So you don't have to know the C language to, to contribute. And if you don't want to touch the code, you can also just have a look at uh, what people are doing. You can help on the, on the documentation. There are many, many things to do. And uh, I think we will be something like four or five core developers this weekend, which is quite impressive. <laughs> so if you would like to to get something merged, just come because we we were we are many people who are able to merge something. And uh, <laughs> there are a few more. So there is also Pablo. There is Steve, and maybe some other people are going to join us for the sprint. Uh, I have no specific plan myself. My plan is just to help you to to get on board on CPython because it's, a, it's more difficult to contribute to Python than to any other project because Python has a very long history. We, kept, we spend a lot of time to make sure that we don't break the backward compatibility. We have a high quality standards and uh, because of that, it's more difficult to get something merged in CPython. But the idea for tomorrow uh, is to, to show you what we do and help you to get some changes merged. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is uh, Nicole. We all know Nicole. Warehouse plans. Nicole? Okay, the next team is MicroPython. Rod oh, you're coming. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to. But the next, no, I, no, 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 sorry. Not, it's not, uh, I just want to alert. The next team is Radomir. And Michael, uh, please just get in line here then. Oh, so, here you go. Sorry, hello. Hello, please hello. welcome Nicole. Uh, so, as you know, I work on the warehouse project um, and we're running sprints all weekend. Um, so, on our issue tracker, um, we have specifically uh, noted particular issues um, that are great for EuroPython, things that we know that we can move forward on. Um, and uh, we're looking for contributions from all experience levels. So, as I said during my talk, um, we've put a lot of work into making the code base um, easy to install, I hope relatively easy to install. Um, and, and we do, we have issues, everything from upgrading the documentation to, to obviously doing more complex things. So we'd really like to have uh, your contribution. Um, I'd also like if uh, anyone's interested, um, I'd like some people to maybe volunteer to help me with making sure that uh, the, the project can be installed as well. So I'm only one person and it's very difficult to sort of troubleshoot things um, if there's any problems. So if you're interested in being one, that person, or perhaps a couple of people uh, to help with that, that would be really great. Um, yeah, uh, that's about it. So check out the warehouse issue tracker. So it's on uh, github slash pypa slash warehouse, uh, and you'll be able to see all of the issues that are tagged uh, for EuroPython. Thank you. Thank you. OK, we have one more. OK, so we can start with the lightning talks. Try to stay short, like two minutes. Is that OK? For the, all the others, folks, sorry, we're running a little late, but we have like only 30 lightning talks, maybe. Um, so, <laughs> OK, the next uh, is then uh, Daniel Pope after. So uh, yours? Oh, no, yeah, you're the next. So please, okay. Daniel, get in mind. So I'd like to propose we, we sprint on MicroPython and CircuitPython. <clears throat> I'm only here tomorrow, not on Sunday, but uh, I'm sure there are there are more MicroPython micro uh, people here who can d continue that for Sunday. So we, we can show you how to start with MicroPython, how to flash it onto your device and, and how to start building things with it. Also, we can, we can show you how to extend it uh, either in Python or in C, uh, how to compile your own firmware and so on. 
and uh, how to write drivers for, for custom hardware that you might be <coughs> acquiring somehow. And last but not least, uh, we can write a simple uh, game for, for one of the devices that I have with me. So there are also emulators for those, so we can write that in emulator and later. Okay, thank you. Okay, game is also like a really good word because game is Daniel's name. Next is uh, Thomas then. Hello, I'm Daniel. Um, if you were here two years ago, uh, well, you know, not here, but in Bilbao, uh, you would have heard me talk about Pygame Zero, which is an educational games framework. Um, well, I'm running a sprint on educational games and uh, games um, uh, and other educational projects. Um, so uh, I have these cool stickers for Pygame Zero that I designed, and they're game pads, and uh, you know, obviously that means gaming, and it's got a Python logo on it. Um, but I forgot that Pygame Zero doesn't have game pad support, so I'm adding that in the sprints, um, and uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, uh, so. Um, there are lots of other projects. Um, if you come along, uh, you will be able to get one of these stickers. That's the only way you can get one of these stickers during this conference. Um, and so Pygame Zero, uh, there is a greenfield project that, uh, called Crypto Zero. So I'd really like to collaborate uh, with, uh, on a Crypto Zero with somebody, so you could own that as well. Um, there is uh, PyWeek is a games programming contest. Um, I now run that. Um, and the website is unmaintained, so or has been lacking maintenance over a long time. So, to make that, uh, so one of the goals would be to make it more accessible for complete beginners to uh, participate in PyWeek. Uh, there is a 3D MMO in in the browser called The Dark World that could be an educational project, uh, and I have an educational uh, games framework called uh, or, or text adventure games framework called Adventurelib. Um, so this sprint is accessible to, uh, you know, you don't need to be a, a great programmer to, to participate in this. You could do translations or anything because the more kids who can uh, understand how to use these things, the more programmers we'll have uh, with us in future years here at EuroPython. Okay. Join Thank me. Thank you. So next in line, Davide. Okay, uh, this is a small demo of Borg Backup. As the name says, it's a Borg Backup program. You can back up files with it. Um, and if you are not completely happy with your current backup solution, you maybe want to have a look at this. Because it's in Python, we use also Cython and C. It deduplicates, it encrypts, and it compresses your backups. It also authenticates your backups, so nobody can do something weird with them. For example, if you store them on some untrusted server. Um, and in the sprints, we want to work on some tickets, uh, maybe close some issues. There are also some research tickets for example, there is currently trouble on Python 3.7. Some um, unit tests are suddenly failing that did not fail on 3.6. And there is a similar issue on PyPy. There are also some uh, tests failing that are not failing on Python 3.6. So if you want to help researching this, you could also work on that. Um, so, if you want to get into it, I can show you the code base, or if you want to just try it and have some issue, just come by. Uh, in the background, you see how it's creating the first backup. So, that's quite a normal thing. Uh, the next one after this will be more interesting because then you see the effect of deduplication. So, you see the first backup was 114 megabytes in size. And now there is a small change in the data. And now it's just creating another backup. And you will see the deduplicated size on the right is the interesting part. And also the time it takes. You see it's much faster than the first one. And it only produced 45 kilobytes because most of the data was still the same. So it's a quite space efficient backup. 
okay, if that's interesting for you, just come by and help me improving it, fixing it, whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Windel, please get in line and now please welcome Davide. Hi everyone. Uh, those days I discovered I'm not the only one who loves trial, so now we are two. I got a buddy, and uh, so we are enough. <laughs> so it's quite enough to start a, a party sprint. And uh, so maybe some of you uh, like trial and I don't know about it yet. So if so, just come to see me uh, just uh, after the, the talks. Just I will buy you a beer. And uh, if tomorrow you're here, let, um, let's just continue talking, do the sprint. If you know nothing about asynchronous programming but just curious, uh, you just can come. And uh, yeah, basically that's it. We will sprint on trio and have fun. Okay, please, Michael, come in line, and please welcome Wendel. Hello, everyone. Um, I wanted to sprint on Rust uh, Python uh, on Saturday, so if you want to learn about uh, Rust and uh, help uh, bring Rust Python more uh, in line with uh, C Python 3.7, please uh, help. There's still things to do. That was quick. Um, okay, uh, Thomas, uh, get, please get in line. Please welcome Michael. Uh, Michael, yeah. yeah, you. Oh, you need to come? Okay. Yeah. So, oh, wrong side. So, first of all, um, so I'm sorry, I made a mistake in editing the, the wiki, so somehow my name also appeared at the MicroPython side. A sprint, so sorry, I, Radomir, I'm sorry about that. But I uh, always, um, sorry, I had in other, already the intention to help you, Radomir. So, okay, can you see something? Yeah, fine. So, this is a small note, notebook application. It's called um, Bread Notebook. And um, I'm not the inventor of this um, tool, but it, um, I, like, I use it already for, for years now, and I like it a lot and I see some issues there and some things that I like to add. So I'm going to sprint. If you like, you can also help me in these sprints. And yeah, <clears throat> what else? Uh, sorry, I'm a bit, I'm a bit out of, of order currently. So um, it's also, of course, it's Python. It's GTK free. Yeah, we, it's, you can run it on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And uh, yeah, it has also a source a page on SourceForge and, of course, also a GitHub repository where the code is hosted. So the things that I like to add there is um, YAML. As, so, sorry, I like to replace YAML by plain text files. I like to add Markdown and uh, pure text um, output, uh, some updates in the GUI, and maybe some other um, things that are open in the open issues. Um, what, my, what might be interesting, we will be using GTK3, um, Deglade as UI Builder, WebKit, Markdown syntax, and of course PyTest with uh, the addition of uh, Magic Mox from um, Unit Test. Okay, I would be happy if somebody likes to help me. Uh, if not, I'm also fine with that. So you can also go for sightseeing. Um, I will be also around in Edinburgh for the next two weeks, for, for the next week. And if you like, you get, can get in touch, then we can go do um, sightseeing together. Yeah, thanks, okay, sorry. Great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thomas is next. Thomas Aglasia, Aglasinger. No? Romain, then it's, the stage is yours. Okay, Thomas is not around. Uh, so if you're around, uh, please report to me. Uh, please welcome Romain and uh, Rom Roman is after words. Please get in line, Roman. Right, 
Thank you. So I'll sprint on Bonobo ETL. Uh, some of you have, may have seen my talk where I introduced a bit the tool, but for those who don't know, it's an tra um, extract transform load framework, which basically means it takes data from basically anywhere and transform it and put it somewhere else. Uh, pretty generic, said like this, but it. It's pretty simple. It uses standard Python, like callable iterators, to define how the transformation are made. We combine that into graphs, that and then the data streams through this graph. Uh, maybe it's completely cryptic, but I'll be around, and it's very open to any kind of experience, whether you're a Python beginner or Python expert, whether you uh, already use Bonobo a lot or not at all. You're very welcome. It's a very good way to discover the thing and discover the, all the easy thing that you, you could uh, do to help on the framework. Uh, so yeah, I'll be available for anything to help, and I hope you'll join and try this. Thank you. Okay, please welcome Roman. Um, hi, so I'm uh, Ronan. I'm a co-dev of uh, PyPy, and um, We'll be uh, sprinting this weekend um, on uh, PyPy, mostly, uh, I think, on implementing um, um, Python 3.6. Uh, we have a branch open, and there are um, uh, quite a lot of um, uh, test failures uh, to fix. So um, basically, uh, if you come to the sprint, um, you'll get to um, uh, have an introduction to, to PyPy. Uh, you'll get to, uh, well, it's a very good opportunity to, to learn how it works because I know it can be uh, overwhelming for uh, newcomers. Um, <clears throat> but it's uh, actually uh, quite easy to make um, uh, small changes uh, to PyPy. Um, so, uh, well, that's it. If you're interested in PyPy, just um, come and uh, see me tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, please welcome Alex and Stefan. They want to sprint on EuroPython. Okay, we're, we are a very good event, great conference, but we have a very good uh, website and with a lot of bugs. Sorry. And we need your help. We are looking for some skills. If you're uh, an expert with Django, please come on. If you're an expert, with uh, Ansible, we need your skill. And for us, um, just, uh, just that. That will be good. And you? Um, so, um, well, I've done the, the badges for the conference. Uh, apart from the... <laughs> so, apart from the bugs we have on the website to get the profiles of you, uh, there are some other processes to, to generate these. If you, if you liked the badges, if you hate the badges, if you didn't get the right badge, if you had to write your, badge, your name on your, on your badge, if you needed... Uh, if you want emojis on the badges... For my other. Join me in the EuroPython Sprint. I will be tomorrow and Sunday morning. Yeah, Sunday. Yeah, that's it. Welcome. All right, I'm going to talk about my Shapiro sprint. So what Shapiro, it's a Python module for lexicon-based sentiment analysis. So essentially it attracts, extracts opinions from natural language text. And it's currently a byproduct of a master thesis. I'm considering to turn it into a real project. It's named after Dr. Shapiro from the movie Morgan, who asks the protagonist, tell me how you feel, which kicks off eventual events. And the current state, there's some working code. I did a talk about it. I started a cleaned up high scaffold project. There's a repository and the issue tracker. Well, basically, what does it do? It uses Spacey to do the language processing and then sets up on Spacey and tries to figure out if people are giving positive or negative comments. So how does this look uh, if you have some code? You run a sentence through it, the schnitzel was not very tasty, the waiter was polite, the football game ended 2-1, and it extracts your opinions, well, the food is somewhat bad, the service is good, and I have no idea what football is. So, what's a schnitzel? That's a schnitzel. 
And I have uh, compiled a list of possible tasks. So in the, oh, that's a different window, sorry. Hope there's time for that. Five, no, conspiracy. So there's a list of, of some tasks we could do. Uh, some of them are simple, just to integrate the project into continuous integration. Some of them are things like detecting idioms, like uh, this leaves something to be desirable. Uh, there's, this is awful, things like that. Um, also, improved lexicon, it works with German and English. Maybe some other languages based on Latin also work. Um, we could use models like should and could. And Maybe there's even, if, it's, if there's someone around who's interested in it, we could do a parser to define languages in an abstract grammar that indicates positive and negative ratings, which basically is what the literature does. So if you're interested in it, join me tomorrow. Thank you.